Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Mr. Bergman, what on what? earth are you doing? You sound like a dying duck. No, I've been working on this. I'm, uh, I've am i been trying to... Uh, I think I'm becoming a musician. Ah, uh, right? well... <laughs> I would say... Probably don't quit your day job. Instead, let's look at uh, AP Chemistry Vodcast no, 2.1. Musician. You don't like my musicians? Uh, well, it, if you can call kazoo an end musical instrument and... Uh, you don't you, think I'm good? Well, I, I don't know. I would say don't quit your day job. Well, guys, Stick I'm, not with chemistry. Certain, I'm not sure I wanted to... Uh, um, no, I don't know. I like it. Well, well I, may, you might want to just explore your, your musical abilities here a little bit. It's kind of like my inner child coming out. Yeah, it's an inner something. <laughs> inner duck. <laughs> I <guess>. duck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no? No. Okay. No. Try again. Well, uh, we're going to start talking about uh, AP Chemistry Podcast 2.1 here. Uh, today, mostly we're going to be looking at naming compounds. And uh, also uh, some uh, chemical equations, I believe. So chemical equations. Oh, yeah. I love chemical equations, Mr. Sands. All right. So um, if you remember correctly, there's a few different types of chemical compounds. We've got ionic compounds. We've got covalent compounds. And we have acids. And they all have different, uh, uh, different rules for naming. So the first thing we're going to look at is ionic compounds. Now, if you remember... What's an ion? It comes uh, like from what word? Mr. Well, it Sam? looks to me like we have the word ion in there. And if you remember things with ions What's have an ion? a positive or a negative charge. And the things with a positive charge are called cat ions. And then we remember that as cat has a T and T's look like a plus. That's true. That's good. Okay, and I like that. And anions are negatively charged. Yes, and what does the prefix A mean in the English language, Mr. Sam? It means uh, uh, opposite of or anti or without. Or so if someone is amoral, they... They have no morals. So this is an anion, this is a negative charge. That's right. That's right, yes. Exactly. So for when we're looking at ionic compounds, first thing we're going to do is we're going to name the cation. And it's real simple. You just look at it, and whatever it is, you just tell it its name. Okay. Um, now, some things like uh, have Roman numerals, and that would be if it's a transition metal. What's that, Mr. Rubin? You have to tra if you're uh, on the podcast, you have to underline it. But transition yeah. metals, where do you find transition metals on the periodic table? Transition metals in the periodic table are in the middle section there, not the group uh, over there on the far left you're or so good at drawing, the Mr. big Sanders. gigantic group over here on the far right. And don't forget we have hydrogen up here and helium up here. But it's all of these guys right here in the middle yeah. of the periodic table. Be these, like scandium and zinc and yeah. silver and my favorite gold. Exactly. And very yeah. often those have more than one possible charge, which is why we have to indicate, with, uh, indicate what those are. And what is the Roman numeral the indicate? Roman, the Roman numeral indicates the charge. It does not indicate how many of them there are in the compound. So iron 3 chloride does not have three iron. No, iron 3 chloride means it has a plus three charge. So let's take a look at that. Iron 3... Chloride. Iron 3 means that's a plus 3 charge. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay, so if we put this together, we're kind of going backwards for what our, our slide here says, but the charges have to cancel out. So if we have a plus 3 and a minus 1 here, then to, for those to cancel out, we need 3 of these minus 1s. Now that's a total of minus 3, so it would be FeCl3. So the formula of iron 3 chloride is FeCl3. Correct. Okay, I'm there. All right, so now if we're naming the compound, let's go the other direction. Let's do something like, uh, let's do a white screen here. Let's just do some practice. Um, so uh, let's take an example. Let's do something really simple like uh, Na... Well, maybe not so simple. Now, now ladies and gentlemen, on your, in your packet, this is actually the second portion, which is examples from formula to name. He's doing the second part, so do that. You're going to fill that in. We're kind of going out of order here. But you'll oh, did we, were we supposed to go name the formula yeah, first? Yeah, we were supposed to name yeah, the let's formula. just go to our next slide. All we'll right, we'll, do, that. we'll, we'll do, do it in order. order. We won't confuse you. All right, Mr. Bergman, you can take I can we'll do this. So if I have a name of a compound, Mr. Sams, can you think of a name of an ionic compound? Oh, how about... Uh, Carbon dioxide. That would be great, right? That's not an ionic car compound, Carbon Mr. Bergman. Carbon dioxide. Why not? No, because because there's no ions there, because to have an ionic compound, we need a metal and some nonmetals. Carbon and oxygen are both nonmetal. Oh, so this is a nonmetal, and this yeah. is a nonmetal, so that makes it a what compound? That would be a covalent, That's compound. A covalent compound. Sometimes it's called a molecular compound, or depending molecular on your, your we want to do an ionic compound. That's Give right. An of an oh, let's go potassium, potassium carbonate. Carbonate. Oh, you're making it hard. Yeah. Wire. Now, students in uh, in Internet land, carbonate, of course, is a polyatomic ion. Yeah. And so what I like to do is I write to like the symbol of the potassium. Of course, you know that the elemental symbol of potassium is 
K, but you must indicate the charge, the charge of the potassium. What is the charge of the potassium, and how do you know that, Mr. Zinn? Charge is plus one because it is in group number one. All the way on the left-hand side of the periodic table, okay. everything in that column has a plus one That's charge. That's correct. A positive one has a positive one charge because it's column number one. And carbonate's a polyion, ends in an eight, and so it's going to be got carbon in it, right? But it's C and then O. And then you need a three, negative two. Now you need to know these charges. If you don't know them, you need to have them memorized. Yep, should have done that last year. Yes, if you don't have those memorized, you need to memorize them. Now I always ask this question when I do this particular problem. I look at the charge, the positive one charge here, and the negative two charge, and I ask this question: Do they add up to zero? Do they add up to zero? Mr. Um, no, they do not add up to zero. So I need to make them add up to zero. How do I make them add up to zero? Well, I think if we add another potassium with plus one charge, we would have a total of plus two. So the formula would be KKCO3, but we don't like to write KKCO3 because that is kind of annoying. So we write K2CO3, indicating that there are two potassiums and a carbonate. And the charge of this particular compound is zero. We always want the net charge of our compounds to be zero of our ionic compounds. Let's think of another example, Mr. Sams. Oh, what? another example. Let's do one. Uh, let's see. How about um, cobalt to nitrate? Now, I'm going to put a two for the Roman numeral two and then say nitrate here. All right, so what is the elemental symbol of cobalt? Cobalt is C-O, and that's big, big C, C, little O. Don't get that confused, folks, with big C, big O. That's carbon monoxide, a molecular or a covalent compound. Cobalt, and the Roman numeral two means what? It has a plus two charge. That's the charge! It does not tell us how many that's there right. are. That's charge. Is charge. charge. Roman numerals are charge. Only charge. 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 Always Only charge, yes. Charge. Good, all right. And nitrate, again, another polyion. N. O three. It has a minus one charge. If you don't know that, you need to memorize it. Look on the list. Memorize them all. Now, what question do I always ask, Mr. Chan? Do they add up to zero? Positive two and negative one do not. No. So we are now allowed to add as many nitrates or cobalts as we would like. What would we like to add? I'm thinking we need one more nitrate. I'm going to go with zero. nitrate. I agree. Now, that means we need two nitrates. Now, the problem here is, this is important here. When you write this out, folks, it's really CONO3. In O3. But again, that is annoying. Chemists never write it like that. So you write CO, and this is often times these students, they'll write NO2 because they say I need two NOs, and that would be wrong. Incorrect. So you need CO, and then you need NO3 twice. So to do that, we have to do what? Parentheses around the polyion. Now, you don't use parentheses if it's just an individual element. But this is a polyatomic ion consisting of nitrogen and oxygen, so we have to use parentheses. And how many of them we have? We have two, so we put a little two there. Very good. All right, let's do one more. Maybe let's the one that's with a two and a three charge or something. Okay, how about um, aluminum sulfide? Aluminum, A-L-L? -L? A A-L. Only one Just a. one L. How about we do that again? Mr. Bergman is a wonderful sub -L or Did you not know that? <laughs> aluminum or aluminium, aluminium if you're British. <laughs> aluminium, what do I do? Uh, sulfide. Sulfide. I don't know if such a thing exists, but hey, we're making I them up. I believe it does. Okay. Aluminum, of course, is the symbol A-L. Now, the thing about interesting aluminum is that we did not know the charge um, because the Roman numeral that didn't say aluminum two or three or whatever, but you should know the charge of aluminum is always what? Plus three. Got to know that. It's one of those things you just have to know. by the way, you AP chemistry students, it's actually three plus, not plus three. Okay, and then sulfide is? Uh, that's S with a two minus charge. Now, it, it ends in an I. Since it ends in an I, it's just the element with its charge. There's a few exceptions to that, for example, cyanide and hydroxide. But if it ends in an I, nitride, sulfide, phosphide, oxide, fluoride, bromide, iodide, then it's just the element with whatever charge is appropriate based upon the period table. Yes, sir. Now, look at this. Do they add up to zero? Positive three and negative two does not add up no, to zero. No, it does not. So I need some additional negative charge. So yes, I'm going to add do. another sulfide. Do they add up to zero? No, they do not. Oh, I need some more positive charge. I'll add another aluminum. Okay. Do they add up to zero? That's this, this side adds up to positive six. This, <laughs> six. That's not a six. That's, That's a, a six. six. Okay. And this side adds up to negative four. That is still not one. Still working. not. A, but if we put another sulfide, now we have positive six and negative six. So another way, if you're, if you're kind of a math geek, um, think of common multiples. What is a common multiple of three and two? Well, the lowest common multiple is six. So you know that they're going to have to add up to six.
So AL2 S3 is your um, formula. And notice there's no parentheses around the S. We reserve the parentheses for our polyatomic ions only. All right, let's go to the next section. Let's go from the formula to the name. All right, so the other direction now. Mr. Bergman, throw me a formula here. And I want you to name, name. Um, M-G-O. M-G-O, Mago. Okay. It's like Magoo. No, never mind. That's no. Something else. <laughs> All right, so MGO. So, again, we're dealing with an ionic compound. I know that because I have a metal and a non-metal. And Magnesium how do you know that's a metal and oxygen. Well, because we have that little stair-stepping line that goes down through our periodic table. Um, and anything to the left of that, generally speaking, is a metal. Anything to the right of that is a non-metal with a few uh, yeah. metalloids. So, folks, if you see it on either side of the line... If you've got one chemical on the on the left and one on the right of the of the stair step, then that makes it ionic. So that makes this ionic. Now, one thing I do when I get these is I split them up into their respective ions. So Mg is always a plus two ion, and oxygen here is always a minus two ion. Now, metal ions, we just give them their name. Mg is magnesium, so I would say mag. Magnesium. Now, folks, don't get magnesium mistaken with manganese. No, nope, they're is different. Which the element MN and is a transition metal. So Correct. Ball game. So careful not to make that mistake. Now, this O here with a minus 2 charge, O is the element oxygen, but whenever we see it with its charge, we put the suffix "-ide", on it. So we're going to call that oxide because it is an ion. It has a charge. So we're going to call it magnesium oxide. Very good. All right, let's try another. Mr. How Gordon will feed me. Do a, I'm going to try and stump you now, Mr. Sarah. All right, give it a shot. Okay, how about iron? No, no, we already did not. Give me formula. Give me formula. Mm, oh, Oof, sorry. Go on the other way. N-I- N-I- N-O-3. N-O-3. N-I-N-O-3. Are you sure that exists, Mr. I do. Bergman? I know it exists. N-I-N-O-3. Okay, N-I-N-O-3. Here we go. So, I know it's an it's a, a ionic compound because I have a metal and some non-metals, so I'm going to split it up into some ions here. So, NO3. I know that always has a minus one charge because I memorized that. Now, NI is a transition metal, and transition metals can often have different charges. So, here's NI, and notice my nitrate over here has a minus one charge. Well, my compound here has to add up to zero for the charge. Always charges. adds up to zero. Always, so I can then deduce that this would be a plus one charge because there's only one of them there. So plus one and minus one, that adds up to zero. NI, I'm going to call nickel. NI, is it EL or LE? EL. Nickel. Unless you're British. Yeah, okay. And, and I'm not. So, um, so <laughs> it, it has a plus one charge and it's a transition metal, so I'm going to put the Roman numeral one, even nickel. With a, even if it's uh, by itself, you have to put a one there? By itself, it doesn't matter how many there are because this indicates the, the charge, charge of the yeah. transition metal. So nickel one and NO3 we know is nitrate. Now, actually, the reason I picked this one, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is because a lot of students want to leave off the Roman numeral when the charge is positive one, but you must remain because you, if it's transition, you must leave the charge. Correct. Okay, how about All right, one more. CR... CR... 2... 2... PO43. PO4. Parentheses. Now, he, he says PO43, and I know that just because I've been doing this a while, that that needs some parentheses because we have a polyatomic ion here, and there's three of them. So, again, we're going to split it up into the ions that we have. We have chromium with some charge, and we have PO4. Now, PO4 is phosphate, and I have memorized that that has a minus 3 charge. Okay? So, if that has a minus 3 charge... Wait a minute, Mr. Bergman. This is going to be really, really Oh, I really funky. made a mistake. Mr. Bergman CR3. creates something that doesn't exist. Let's try CR3, PO4, two. two. There we go. That's going to make a lot more sense. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, we're testing you, Mr. Sam. You CR3. didn't catch my mistake. I did not off the top of my head. Oh, <laughs> the duck is back. No, you don't. Okay. Nah, okay. All right. All right. So, uh, PO4, two. Now, if I put two of those here, just for the sake of putting... Two of those now, why there. did you put two there? Because there's a little two right here, and that told us that there oh, are, right and I'm going to add up my total charge. That's a total of minus six on this Perfect. side. Now, my chromiums, I have three, CR, CR, and CR, and that has to add up to plus six because it always has to add up to what? Zero. Must be zero. So if I have three things that must add up to plus six, they all must be plus two. Now, chromium, being a transition metal, is going to get a Roman numeral. So chromium has an H. Chromium. Now, what you need to put there is going to be the focus is the Roman numeral. Do now, the Roman three. But you need to say Roman numeral two, two because the charge is two. The so chromium, is two, not the number of atoms. Correct. Chromium two because the charge. Chromium two, and then PO four is phosphate. Very good. 
you go. Okay, I think we have beat that one enough. Okay, we're going to talk we're about naming acids. I think Mr. Bergman's going to take the pen. I